<laughs> Thank you so very much, Madam Chair, and uh, great to see you again, uh, Secretary Raimondo. Uh, everywhere I go in Georgia, I'm hearing um, from families who are struggling because of shortages uh, and breakdowns in our supply chains. Uh, I recently visited Noonan, Georgia, uh, a town that is suffering uh, a year later from the devastation of a tornado. Uh, families there have been struggling to rebuild their lives and uh, as they try to get their lives going again, one of the biggest problems that they have is windows. Uh, folks simply can't get windows delivered quickly enough so that they can get back in their homes a year uh, after the tornado. This year, the Department of Commerce has requested over $15 million to analyze global supply chains. And I think it's important to collect this data but we're now years into this crisis and Georgia families need more, uh, need more than data, obviously. They need help. Uh, Secretary Raimondo, what is the value of having this new information and how will it inform your specific actions to address supply chain issues? Yeah, thank you, Senator. And you know, those are heartbreaking stories and we hear them uh, all over the country. I don't think anyone predicted how much havoc COVID could wreak on our supply chains. And if we've learned one thing these past couple of years, it's that the federal government is woefully under-researched and under-focused on supply chains and shoring up our resiliency. So what we are doing, and I'll follow up with you specifically on the windows to see yeah. what we can do. Because my, by the way, what I've learned is you have to go deep into each sector. And so I'll follow up to help you with that. That'll be great. But in any event, um, you know, what we need to do is have a continuous, constant monitoring and mapping of these supply chains. We need to provide financing. You know, we've lost 25% of our small and medium-sized manufacturers in the past 25 years. Our small and medium-sized manufacturing industrial base has been decimated. Germany, Japan, other countries, they invest. They make small loans available to small manufacturers so they can provide these goods to our people. So that's what the Department of Commerce ought to be doing, and that's why we're requesting this money. Not so that we can just fight the fires associated with supply chain disruptions from Russia or COVID, but so that we can like, prevent these disasters in the future. Right. And if Congress appropriates this funding, what supply chain improvements will Georgia families see when they're at the grocery store or the hardware store buying school supplies? When will they actually start seeing these changes? Look, I hope that people are starting to feel it a little bit every week, every month, every year. We are working, as I said earlier, I currently have 40 work streams going on supply chains. This stuff, I wish I could flip a switch, you can't, but we're, you know, Congestion at the ports is down. Better pricing in right. lumber. We're seeing it. Um, we're just going to have to stay at it with a vigilance and sense of urgency every day, product by product. And beyond the budget process, we also have an opportunity to strengthen supply chains through the bipartisan competition bill. I look forward to that work uh, uh, happening here in the Senate. I'm a proud member of uh, the uh, conference committee representing uh, the concerns of Georgians. I'm glad that we agree that, the, that one of the top priorities should be to shore up the semiconductor supply chain uh, through funding incentives to bring chips manufacturing to, to the United States. It's been almost a year since we considered this funding in this committee. Will you be ready to distribute the funding as soon as it's available? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we have to go through the process and the, the statutory requirements, but we are already laying the groundwork. I would suggest, Senator, that the single most important thing you or any senator can do to ease the inflationary pressures and supply chain problems in your state is to quickly pass USICA or the Bipartisan Innovation Law. That calls for um, work on chips, which are in every piece of electronics. It calls for a, an establishment of a supply chain office. We will never be able to fundamentally solve these problems for your constituents until that law is passed and the federal government is implementing it. 
I certainly agree there that we need to get this law passed as soon as possible uh, so we can provide uh, real relief uh, to the supply chain crisis and impact on ordinary folks. And I look forward to fighting uh, to make that happen as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to see you. Well, I think I would.